Person uh, is Barry Manilow. I guess it was 2006. Uh, Rachel and I were in Las Vegas. Barry Manilow was playing, so you know it's not wouldn't necessarily jump out as the a t a show we run out to see. But we said, you know, let's let's go see Barry Manilow. It was remarkably fun, you know, and it sort of became such an incredible bonding experience. Midway through, we were both sort of you know it was kind of like testing each other out whether or not is this cool is it fun you know we were you know dating still at that point but it, we we just kind of loosened up and just really had such a great time with it i think it was maybe one of the first times in our relationship where we were able to just be completely who you were without trying to be imp impress the other person or uh be anything other than what it was it was just a pure goofy love of Copacabana or whatever you happen to be playing. <laughs> well, how did you well, but take I, that I, Well, I, all of those things, you know, were s we had the most amazing night, obviously, but then, years and years later, together, married, children, living in New York, and uh, Barry Manilow has had the show on Broadway, whatever. He had right. his, what, the most recent show, and we were like, let's go see him. And <laughs> we had the most incredible time. I think we, at one point, we were both crying, <laughs> and we just realized that you know, that's like the soundtrack of your life. Yeah, it's funny. We, we, we went to recreate this magical experience <laughs> we had when we were dating. It's sort of like we're, we're chasing that Barry Manilow concert. <laughs> we're but hoping to recreate that night. And, and it worked. Where is your place? The living room in our house in Mammoth, California. Something just happened. We walked into this space and we looked out at this view uh, from the living room in this place. And we both looked at each other immediately and we're like, oh my God, we need to, something needs to happen here. We need to have this It's home. this spectacular view of... Uh, it's the Sherwin. It's in the Sierra Nevada, Nevada mountains. Yeah. For us, I, I feel like it represents something that we don't have enough of, which is family time. It's, it's almost like it's out there looming like a challenge, like work less or or be with family more slow down yeah the fact that it's there reminds us to enjoy things like that yeah it's the physical means to achieve a kind of uh, emotional satisfaction you have to be worthy of the house it's, it hardly exists right. as a physical thing it's, right. a, it's a way to um, I I induce you to have the kind of lives you think you should be having what is your thing our thing uh, our two collections of individualized uh, popsicle sticks on which are written handwritten notes from our children. We both um, felt at the time we were giving them that these were the most special gifts we ever got from anybody. What they are, they're these big colored popsicle sticks on which are written notes that they, these are all their own, the, the idea for the project wasn't theirs, but the notes are all uh, th all their own sen sentiments. I just happened to pick out one that just said, you are the best dad, which is, that was, that was a nice way to start. You do great on your scripts. <laughs> 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 um, and the, there's a hundred of these things in here. And, you know, when I'm having, I keep this on my desk, and when I'm having a rough day or a, just randomly, I will just pull out a popsicle stick. And it's sort of like a fortune cookie in a way. You know, you're, it's usually the message you want to hear. All three of your choices um, tiptoed right up to sentimentality. You're not being a hipster when you pick Barry Manilow. Uh, yeah, and, and we're and just and not hipsters in any way. And, and, <laughs> and uh, you know this this picture of domestic bliss and loving nature, and, right. then, and then a story about loving your children. And, right. and that you tiptoe up to sentimentality, but you never quite cross over. I don't know how you do that. I think we're both really sentimental yeah, people. I mean, sure. I, yeah. I mean, especially. With family stuff, you know, even more so. I mean, I, I like save every little scrap of paper and, and every uh, photograph. Yes, I'm like does. the keeper of like f the family photographs and documenting. But you're and you're into history. genealogy, you're yeah. into history, legacy, like yeah, that kind all that of thing. stuff. And also, really I think it has to do with to your me. dad. Yeah, well, my dad lost my dad when I was seven, uh, which is it's really weird for me too. So my son is now exactly the age I was when I lost my dad. So. We're transitioning into what, what I think is going to be a very psychologically strange period for me a in terms of my relationship with my son. I'm, right, I'm now witnessing him going into what will be, in a year from now, will be uncharted territory with me and my dad. I didn't have a dad after that period. So 
the fact that I'm with him and being with him and doing things with him is so much more special because I feel like I'm getting away with something in a weird way. Thank you.